Hi, my name is KD. I'm part of Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Thank you for joining this session on Oracle Functions. This is part one of this session. So in this session, we are going to start with uh, why do we need Oracle Functions. We'll look at uh, serverless compute. We'll talk a little bit about the FN open source project uh, on which the Oracle Functions uh, service is based. Uh, we are going to get into the overview and key features uh, for the function service. We are going to discuss the core concepts of uh, applications, functions, invocations, triggers, etc. in Oracle Functions. We are going to discuss the IAM policies uh, that you need in OCI for working with functions. We are going to talk about um, <clears throat> under the cover what happens when you deploy a function and then what happens when you actually invoke a function. Uh, we'll look at uh, the metrics that the service reports. Uh, we will uh, look at some reference architecture of common use cases uh, with functions. And finally, we will uh, look at a demo of uh, the Oracle function service in action. Let's get started. So uh, let's start with serverless. It is uh, uh, quite a mainstream thing uh, right now. Uh, serviceless is actually a category of cloud services that raises the abstraction level so that uh, you don't have to think about uh, uh, servers, VM or VMs or other underlying infrastructure components. Um, it is, uh, in a way, it's an execution model of uh, in within cloud computing in which the cloud provider, in this case OCI, runs the, uh, runs the underlying infrastructure and uh, dynamically manages all the uh, allocation of all the resources that are uh, required uh, to be run. <coughs> um, functions as a service is an example of the compute uh, pieces of uh, serverless. So serverless compute is one category of serverless and uh, uh, functions as a service uh, is we are going, what we are going to discuss here because uh, the Oracle Functions uh, service <coughs> is, belongs to this category. Uh, functions uh, and, uh, have been getting quite popular uh, and the reasons include uh, there is just less for you to manage. Uh, you don't have to worry about underlying infrastructure components, uh, which means that you can focus only on your uh, uh, writing code for your business logic and solving those problems. Uh, you can improve uh, your productivity since uh, uh, you have less to do in the end-to-end -end stack. Uh, you can be uh, more agile and be uh, nimble. You can experiment more. Um, it can be cheaper for you as well because uh, in this case, you only pay for when your code is running. Uh, so, you know, in a traditional environment, uh, you know, on the left side of this picture, you see bare metal or VMs. What you have to do is uh, manage the VM, which is running uh, all the time. Uh, you have to worry about patching the operating system. Uh, you have to install the right runtime. Let's say Java, you have to install all the uh, application components, uh, let's say Tomcat server, and then there is your code that you have to manage. Uh, and uh, you pay for all of this setup to be running. Um, all the time, whether the actual code is being executed or or not, whether you have an incoming request or not, you have to be up and running, waiting for those requests to come in. But with the functions, uh, you only uh, need to uh, deploy your code, and uh, uh, the code is run in response to uh, you know to some triggers that we are going to talk about shortly. And uh, once the code is actually executed, that's the only time you are paying for it and not outside of that. So it can uh, save you uh, money. Uh, and uh, it is actually more reliable uh, for you because you don't have to worry about any networking issues, anything going wrong there, uh, no configuration issues on the infrastructure layer, uh, no performance issues at the infrastructure level. Uh, and it provides, uh, you know, uh, you don't have to do capacity planning or maintenance or worry about scalability. All of these things are, are getting managed for you. 
So it's a big win uh, for many use cases. So let's talk about uh, Oracle Functions, which is an on-demand, uh, fully managed, and highly scalable functions as a service platform uh, for Oracle Cloud Infrastructure or OCI. Uh, you would use functions when you want to just focus on, on writing code to meet your business needs. You don't have to worry about the underlying infrastructure um, like we discussed. Uh, because functions uh, service will ensure that your application is highly available, scalable, secure, and it is monitored and you get the uh, metrics out of it. Uh, it works very well uh, with uh, the uh, OCI uh, ecosystem, integrates with identity and access management in OCI. For example, it is uh, container native. Uh, so if you uh, are familiar with Docker, uh, or use Docker containers, uh, uh, you know, uh, function uh, uses that. Uh, it is based on the uh, open source uh, uh, FN project. So FN project is uh, Apache 2.0 licensed. It is container native. It is a serverless platform and it can be uh, run anywhere. It can be run uh, on cloud, on premises, on your laptop as long as you can run a Docker container, you can run FN. Let's take a quick look at the FN project page. Uh, you can go to fnproject.io uh, and you can uh, go to quick start. There's documentation, tutorials, and a lot of other collateral that can uh, um, help you. So I'm going to uh, show you around a little bit. So this is all on GitHub. It's open source uh, Apache 2.2 license, as I said. And you can uh, contribute this project as well. And you can uh, use this project any way you like, uh, whether it's in OCI or in any other cloud platform or your uh, on-premises deployment, as well as on your uh, uh, laptops, etc. It is uh, platform independent that way. It is based on the Docker containers. Uh, and so you can use uh, all of that Docker container uh, uh, ecosystem uh, with it. Uh, it, uh, uh, it is also in that sense, uh, scheduler independent. If you're using Docker, you can use Kubernetes if, you know, in case you're using it on your laptop or in your on-prem or any way you want, you can use uh, uh, different schedulers, Kubernetes, Swarm, Mesos, et cetera, and leverage all the Docker ecosystem effectively. Uh, and you know it comes with uh, uh, some uh, FDK, so it's not language specific. Uh, as long as you can create a Docker container, uh, you can run any language. But there is uh, support for uh, uh, functions development uh, kits uh, for uh, uh, Java, obviously. It's a first class citizen here, uh, and uh, as well as um, uh, you know there is uh, Python. Uh, Go and Ruby, etc. Uh, but you know you can use any other uh, language uh, that you can that you want as long as you can create a container. And this actually represents uh, uh, you know uh, a difference in in uh, the OCI strategy uh, with respect to serverless and functions as service uh, than other platforms. Uh, Every cloud platform out there has a functions uh, service of some kind. Uh, the difference is that uh, all, all those providers pretty much have a proprietary solution that lock you in, but using Oracle functions based on FN, you can uh, essentially do your development and, and leverage it uh, anywhere. Uh, again, it's a paper uh, execution only when the code is running and uh, uh, it is autonomous in the sense that the platform is going to auto scale and you don't have to uh, manage the infrastructure uh, components. Uh, and in terms of overviews, I'm going to get into the detail, but right now it's, uh, uh, it's important to just mention that it's very easy to work with. You can do your uh, dev test and development uh, on your uh, own laptop, which is also differentiated with uh, many other uh, cloud provider offerings out there. But you essentially uh, upload your uh, uh, 
code and your configuration to uh, to a container registry uh, OCI has uh, OCIR, uh, the container registry in, in OCI. You can leverage that or any other container registry if you want. Uh, you set up a trigger. A trigger could be any kind of event. Uh, so you can directly invoke a function, set up timers to invoke it, or it can be triggered uh, through uh, the OCI events service as well. Uh, you can uh, directly invoke using the HTTP endpoint that each uh, function automatically creates an Oracle function service. Uh, so once you set up the trigger, the Oracle functions will run your code only in response to your uh, uh, trigger and uh, you will only pay for the time that your code is actually running and nothing outside of that. Uh, and the uh, uh, function service integrates very nicely in the OCI ecosystem. So you get very useful metrics uh, uh, with uh, built-in monitoring. Uh, it runs in your uh, VCNs and uh, uh, you can uh, specify the subnets to use, etc. It can, uh, or it integrates with the, the uh, IAM service, the identity and access management service in OCI as well. Uh, this is an example of um, of a uh, of a function. Uh, you know the piece of code Java in this case, but you can use other languages. We'll look at uh, you know uh, these examples. Uh, 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 some more examples later on. I'll give you a demo as well. But you can uh, leverage SDK and and essentially write code in a way which is very familiar and similar to what you have been uh, doing. So your uh, development environment does not really need, need to change uh, much. Uh, there are uh, uh, function development kits. Uh, there are these uh, uh, five uh, languages that are first class citizens right now uh, that I mentioned. Uh, you know, Python, Java, Go, Node.js, and, uh, and Ruby. Um, but you know, if you can, uh, Containerize something in Docker containers. You can uh, run these uh, in uh, in OCI. Uh, let me wrap up uh, part one of this session uh, right now. Uh, till now, we have uh, looked at uh, uh, what are functions as a service offerings. Why do we uh, need them? We discussed uh, serverless compute. We uh, looked at the open source FN project and uh, on which the Oracle function service is based. Uh, we, uh, we discussed the differentiators uh, for Oracle function service and we looked uh, at uh, some of the key features and an overview of this uh, service. Uh, in part two, we will start with uh, uh, getting deeper into the uh, core concepts of the service. I look forward to you joining uh, part two of this session. Thank you.